So in the last few videos, we were discussing how can we use always blocks to model sequential circuits or synchronous circuits. But uh, we can use always blocks to model combinatorial circuits also. Okay. So everything that we model using data flow, they can be modeled in behavioral also. That means using always blocks. So that's what we are going to discuss today. So we'll start with an example. We will do the same example of the 4-bit adder. So we have module 4 bit, let's call behavioral adder. So this is a combinator circuit, so we don't have the clock. We have 4 bit A and B inputs A. and the 5-bit output. So, okay, then we will have the always block. Now, previously, we were writing POSAGE or POSAGE clock or POSAGE reset. That's how we were writing in the bracket. So, remember that bracket, whatever you write inside the bracket, it is called sensitivity list, which basically tells the tool when the output should change so when you write always at postage clock that means the output is going to change or the signals on the left hand side of the assignment inside the always block they are going to change only during the post edge of the clock okay so that's how it happens in sequential circuits or synchronous circuit but for a combinational logic what is the requirement for a combinational logic the output should change or the signals on the left hand side of assignment should change as soon as the input signals change or the signals on the right hand side changes so what we should write in the sensitivity list we will have to list all the inputs to the circuit in the sensitivity list so here our inputs are a and b right so we are basically saying whenever there is any change in a and b whatever you write here should happen and we'll say s is a plus B okay so if either A or B changes immediately S will get the sum of A and B and that is what is representing our adder now remember there was a rule every signal on the left hand side inside always block should be reg type so S should be declared as reg type here now this is what I said before although we write reg S here in this particular case, S is not an output of a flip-flop because this is a pure combinational circuit. So S is the output of a combinational circuit of some gate. It is not the output of a flip-flop. But still, we will have to follow the rule. All the signals on the left-hand side of the assignment should be declared as reg type. Now, here I am using blocking assignment statement. You can use non-blocking also. Okay, It will work in the exact same way. But I prefer to use blocking assignment to clearly show that this is a combinational circuit. Okay, so let's try and simulate it. Orbit behavioral adder. So let me give the values, say, tick D4 and Tick D5 to A and B. Let's run for some time. And you can see the output became 9. And output immediately changed as soon as the input changed, right? So here, let's make it 3. Tick D3. And when you run it, output became 7. So this is a pure combination circuit. Now, let's quickly write our mux also. So let me take another file. Okay, so we have module max. We have input A, input B, input S, and output O. So of course O will be inside always block. I know now itself. 
so i am directly declaring it as register okay. so we can write always at what are our inputs a b s all of them are the inputs right so if a changes b changes or s changes the output should be reevaluated so we'll say a b s and if s okay we can say o is a else o is b okay put pick in and roll so let's call it max behavioral we can compile it for simulation remember you have to use module name not the file name we can make a as one b as zero Okay, let's make S as one first, and you can see O is one because A is one. Now, if we make S as zero, it is supposed to choose B, which is zero. So our output also becomes zero. Okay, so in this way we can model it. So remember to put all the inputs in the sensitivity list. So when I say inputs, every signal on the right hand side of the assignment statement, every signal which is coming with if, else if statement, and in future we'll be using case statements also. So everything coming with if, else if, everything coming on the right hand side, everything coming on the case statement, all of them should be put in the sensitivity list. Now suppose you forgot to put something in sensitivity list, let's say, uh b you forgot to put b so this basically means your circuit is sensitive to only a and s so output is supposed to change only if there is any change in a and s and output is not supposed to change if there is any change in b okay so let's see what really happens so let's recompile there is no syntax error it's not a syntax error so let's make a as again 1 b as 0 and s as 1 so output will become 1 because there is change in a and s if any of them changes output is supposed to change so o became 1 now let me make s as 0 like before since s is in sensitivity list when i change s my output became zero okay now let me change b to one now in a in a real max s is zero so whatever value is in b is supposed to come to o and here if you see that is not happening because b changed and b is not in our sensitivity list so this expression is not evaluated by the simulator that's why even if b changed output didn't change from a simulation perspective from a hardware implementation perspective whether this can be really implemented or not is a question we have to make a circuit whose output is depending upon a b and s as per this expression you can see output depends upon a b and s but output should not change if there is a change in b which doesn't make sense so whether the implementation tool will be really able to implement the circuit is a question he won't be really implemented the tool might warn you that uh, you have b which is not in the sensitivity list the tool might give you a warning the implementation tool in simulation there is this is not even a warning you can see there are no errors and warning so he will just simulate and show you what you have written okay but in a practical implementation this circuit might not be possible this circuit is not possible let me say it like that and the tool might implement something and it won't reflect what you have written so to prevent this forgetting uh, putting all the signals in the sensitivity list there is a shortcut 
uh, we can use a wildcard so instead of writing all the signals here you can simply write always at star okay so this star will represent all the inputs to the circuit so every signals on the right hand side everything inside the conditional statement everything is included in the sensitivity list automatically so this you can go ahead and simulate you will get the same marks that we got before Another common mistake that we make when modeling combinational logic using behavioral modeling is inference of latches. Okay. So what latches are, maybe in lectures you will find out. Latches are also memory elements, but unlike flip-flop, they don't take a clock signal. Instead, they have a signal called enable signal, and it will propagate its input to output only when enable signals are there. So they are sequential circuits, that means they are memory elements, latches, but they are not a synchronous circuit. They don't run on a clock. They run basically on enable signal. So there shouldn't be any latches in combinational circuits, ideally, because by definition, combinational circuits, they don't have any memory. They don't have to remember anything from the past. But if you don't do proper coding, especially conditional statements, if, else, if, and case statements, if you don't do it properly, you will be inferring latches. The implementation tool, when you go for actual implementation, there will be latches inferred instead of uh, getting pure combinational circuit. Okay, so let's see why that happens. So as I mentioned, uh, that happens when you don't do proper coding for conditional statements. For example, here I have written if s equal to a, o equal to a, and suppose I didn't write this else case. Okay, so what does it mean? This simply means if the value of s is one, o should get the value of a. Then the question is. What value O should get if S is not 1? Okay, so you didn't write it explicitly. And we guess like uh, normal programming, uh, maybe you feel like S will be always 1. S will never get the value of 0, something like that. And you missed that case. But as far as Verilog is concerned, if you don't specify an else case, that means the output of the circuit remains the same. Okay, so that's the implicit meaning. So if S is 0, whatever was the previous output, whatever was the previous value in O, that should remain there. That is the meaning. So how that will get implemented? Let's see. So we have the output O. We have the input S. What we wrote here? We wrote if S is 1, O will get A. So what he will do is he will use a latch. Looks like flip-flop again a memory element and it has an enable signal so only when this signal is high the input will propagate to output so here we have a and let me write q itself here output of flash and o is there see so instead of a mux which is a pure combination circuit what is inside mux you know now instead of a mux this is what you've got. This is combo. This is not combo. Okay. This is a sequential. This has memory. Now latches, uh, usually in designs, we don't like latches. Okay. So later we will see why don't we prefer latches. We usually prefer either pure combination circuits or flip-flops if we need memory. Latches, they will badly affect the timing performance of the circuit for the time being let's state like that it will affect the performance of your circuit okay so you should always try to avoid latch inferences so whenever you are writing if else if or later case statement you should cover all the cases under that okay so similar condition if you know java programming language uh, that also enforces something like that so if you are writing if uh, under combination circuit you should cover all the possible cases so we need something like that maybe you can say like if uh, s is zero you always need o to be become zero so that you have to explicitly write you cannot assume like the tool will uh, take it something like that okay in our case it was b now if this was a synchronous circuit previously we wrote so input clock and here we will have always set or such clock uh, you may write like if s o is a suppose you wrote something like that okay so here also we didn't cover all the cases 
but this is fine as far as this is what you need okay so this basically means on the positive edge of the clock if s is 1 s value should go to o if s is not 1 that means if s is 0 o should have its previous value it should hold the previous value so how it will be implemented so we will have a flip flop there are different ways of implementing it so one way is we will have a flip flop d flip flop and we wrote like if s is 1 so s i have if s is 1 a should go to the output so here you can see whenever s happens i have a mux here he will choose this a and that will go as the output if s is zero he will choose whatever comes here so what i should connect there so if s is zero the output should remain as before so what we can do we can take a connection like this and connect here so whenever s is zero this will go as the output of the mux and that will go as the output so he will return the previous output so here we still have d flip flop there is no latch inference here in sequential circuit if you are using clock edges but you wanted to design a combination circuit and if you don't cover all the cases you have latch which is a bad thing to happen okay so with this we will conclude this video and we'll discuss more details in the next video